Yeah, good morning guys welcome again to this channel and today we're gonna look about um, why the gen z's have surrendered to pluto's uh, tactics okay we have had a lot of uh, protests in the past weeks and uh, now it has come to an end so there is uh, some factors that made these kids to retreat uh, factor number one is that uh, the police have been using live bullets to, and many many of the uh, many of the protesters have been killed. So this one can instill also fear to some people, not to go to the Mandaman. Uh, factor number two is that uh, politicians have started. Uh, getting hold of this thing they want to be part of it like yesterday i saw the audience but they were talking about it some politicians they side with the uh, protesters like they want to identify themselves with, with, with these protesters but the kids say they don't want old generations in this thing now it has become an older generation thing so it has lost its value Another thing is that um, goons are being hired. Like in Eldoret, we saw some people with uh, long poles, long rungus. And uh, in uh, Nairobi yesterday, we saw people with, with rungus. We saw people coming from the governor's office with the motorbikes. Well, I heard that Sakaja paid them. And uh, they did what they did yesterday. Number three, uh, we have these uh, activists who make a living on chaos. So they will not want it to end. People like Boniface Mwangi, they thrive in chaos. They make more money in chaos. Like in this one, he has made millions of money. So people like him, they are there they might be working even for the government so they go to the streets they pretend to be with them but they're getting intelligence they're getting info of what is what the government should do so they pretend to be with the people but they are making money and they're working for the government people like boniface monk another thing is that uh, the politicians in kenya are cunning and they can do anything so it is better for the young ones to retreat because uh, these people are heartless and uh, they don't care you see how they passed the bill the country was already people are protesting they still passed the bill under the, uh, the supervision of speaker moses Wetangula. so it is good my advice is that uh, they should retreat they should even stop the mandamanos and what they should do is that uh, the older age, the older generation, that is from 1980s and and to 1920s, the people who are born with, within 1901 and 1980, these people are the older generation. What they should do is that uh, you know the older generation will still vote for their current president if he will be on the ballot. They will still vote for him so to outdo them and get competent leadership if you have seen that this leadership has failed because the leadership has been elected on a rebel manner and on a corrupt manner so if the leadership has failed uh, you should take your vote and if come 2027 go and vote the competent leadership that we need but i believe kenyan ile ile people will still go to their tribal politics they will still go to their revenge mission tactics they will still vote with emotions and william ruto if he will be on the ballot he will win with a landslide i'm telling you that is how kenya is we choose wrong things and we start complaining after one month we had options we chose wrong we start crying after one month so i think no one should sympathize with this country we as the citizens we have failed 
we cannot blame Ruto for whatever is going on because I, I have told you on this channel categorically is that this president was elected to revenge. The people were electing him, they thought that he would punish Uhuru, he would send Raila to Bondo and ABCD. That are the reasons why we chose him to 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 did to remove the dynasties completely. So we did not choose him to work. And the better thing of the better part of the thing is that he is doing exactly what we chose him to do. So for me, I see the country if it has a problem with the people, we are the problem. We are to blame to blame ourselves. We are the ones who chose this government. And we cannot, there is no way we, he can go now. And then maybe 2027, if you are serious, if you leave your tribal politics, your religious type of politics, and um, voting with emotions, we can get competent leadership in this country, whereby it, this country has a potential. It has people who are very thinking, people who are educated. We have people who can work. We have business people. We have a lot of potential guys. But because of the wrong leadership we put, these leaders are making wrong policies, left, right, and center. Over taxation will just shut down many businesses, many startups, many things that will have employed people and then will have collected more tax. So whoever is advising the Waitangulas and the rulers of this uh, century is doing very bad because uh, the more you tax, the more businesses close the more we lose revenue, you understand? So we have a problem. People will not invest because they feel that if you invest, the, when you, it's not that they feel that. When you invest in a way there is a lot of tax, it's either your services or your goods will be, you need to sell them triple the price so that you can raise the tax or you close the business. And so, many businesses will close many multinationals will leave the country to other neighboring countries like uganda or rwanda or burundi so that is what this government doesn't know they know but they they want a shortcut to make money so that they can have good watches good shoes good cars so that they can buy helicopters the only way they can do so is by overtaxing us but the better way if they could get more tax was to lower the tax, which will encourage more young Kenyans to be entrepreneurs when they invest. Like if you have like 10 million people who have invested in small businesses and they're paying taxes, the government will collect more tax. But when you raise the taxes, people will close their businesses. The government will close, will collect very less tax and they will have no otherwise rather than to have a bankrupt government you understand so the only way is that uh, kenyans have failed not root has failed kenyans are failures during elections they don't have brain during voting time they don't have a brain they put tribe first and head and emotions like when you go and vote and say you want to remove dynasties why do you think that is correct if that is the reason you are voting do you think we have a country if you go to vote to say you are removing a dynasty or you want to send baba to bond if your motive of voting is that then we are lost as a country guys i saw what happened in 2022 people did not vote to have better leadership at the top they voted to punish Uhuru. They voted to send Baba to Bond. They voted to remove the dynasties. If that was the logic of voting, what do you expect, guys? You can let me know in the comments below. Prayer cannot save this country. The only thing that can save this country is that when you go to the ballot, you need to, to open up your mind. Think of the future of the nation. Think when you are gone, the people who are left behind, will they find a country? Think of that, put the future first, and you see which leader can have interest of the future at heart. Who, the future means that if someone wants the better future for the country, he implement better policies that will have 
will enable its the citizens of the country to have a better life and the future also will be bright for the for all so i think uh, the problem is kenyans the problem is kenyans guys if you are still new to this channel kindly subscribe kindly subscribe to this channel and make sure that you like this video that one will help us a lot guys subscribe guys just click subscribe button we just need to even hit 5000 subscribers that one i will be very grateful guys so back to politics we need to wake up during elections see the future see a leader who can perform i know we have a shortage of, we don't have a shortage of leadership the young people also uh, people who look youthful they have failed us in bar in, in Ibunge. people like babu wino muhammad ali dindi nyoro silvana sosoro if you look at these leaders <coughs> they are young but uh they are not even the the i cannot uh, say that they are a good picture of what leadership should be you understand so age should not be should not be the matter if you feel that someone can perform someone can work for the country someone can work for the future someone can work for the future for the interest of the citizens that they may lead a good life that their businesses may thrive by implementing better policies if you feel that not about here if we elect even young people in parliament guys uh, in 2027 you will see wonders they are worse than these old people that you are seeing i'm telling you the younger people are in parliament for of today karen nyamus of today they have showed us that the younger generation cannot lead i'm telling you the reality and even you can see ruto is born 1967 he's also a youthful president he's not a youth but he is a youthful president he, according to the leaders worldwide he's, he's young but you can see he cannot even manage the government he listens to boys also boys younger than him like ichungwa like osoro like didimas so if the president is young and is not performing the younger mps younger members of parliament younger senators they are the most useless leaders that we have ever had that we are seeing today i think uh, we should age should not be a factor during elections tribe should not be a factor during elections religion should not be a factor during the elections you should not put in emotions during voting you should not go to vote for revenge because when you revenge you vote that you are punishing someone you are punishing yourself and your kids and your future generations yeah because when you vote in an ignorant an ignorant way it leads to choosing wrong leadership of which they will destabilize the country now you see the education system is paralyzed the health sector is paralyzed because of what because we chose wrong leadership that one you should understand very clearly we chose the wrong leadership so uh, we chose wrong leadership because of what because we voted with emotions the county governments should be able to make counties work counties will work like this each county should have even factories they should have they should be like a nation on its own you see they should employ the youths the factories or the startups in those counties should enable the youths to get jobs in their home counties not to go to nairobi but when we go to the ballot we choose wrong governors as well it's not only about root when you choose a wrong governor it means the resources of your county will be mismanaged and when they are mismanaged you have no otherwise other than to leave your county and go to nairobi thinking of better future but nairobi is already full guys let us be logic here the counties have a, a, a potential to employ to help 
to get better policies and get people employed in those counties by better policies it means we can bring in investors we can do what by but the government of the day should also lower taxes so that people can invest so that people can get jobs in all the counties we have potential guys kenya is a sleeping giant i hope one day we will get leadership not we will get people will wake up from their tribal dreamland from their hatred dreamland, from their religious dreamland, and elect committed leaders that will work for this country for a better future. So guys, let us wake up and think. If you are watching this video for the first time, kindly subscribe and make sure you hit the like button. And we appreciate your, your support, guys. Thank you so much and may you be blessed.